Fall protection standards have changed. We should talk about how this affects self-retracting lifelines. John, is it mandatory that people update existing SRLs to the new standard revision? So short answer for this would be no. Longer answer for this would be it really depends. So for the short answer, it, you know, existing SRL equipment that has been manufactured to the previous revisions of this ANSI standard can continue to be used as long as they meet inspection and they meet the manufacturer's instructions. Now, the longer answer, it depends, really depends on where the work is being performed, what jurisdictions, you know, the, the end user falls under. So if they're doing a job uh, through EM385, which is US Army Corps of Engineers, they may say that you need this updated ANSI uh, 2021 SRL equipment. Um, company policy might say the same, but the short answer is really, according to OSHA, you know, know that the equipment that's currently being used can continue to be used as long as it passes inspection. Have the arresting distances changed for both classes? Yeah, so the previous uh, 2014 revision of this ANSI standard had a class A and a class B. Class A had an arrest distance of 24 inches and class B had an arrest distance of 54 inches. Under this new 2021 standard, both uh, distances for class one and class two is now 42 inches. So that is a change that we do see with this standard. Has the fall protection code increased the maximum user weight capacity? No. So that is one thing that hasn't changed. ANSI allows equipment manufacturers for fall protection to test from 130 pounds on the low end to 310 pounds on the high end. That has not changed with this 2021 self-retracting device uh, revision. So we still have that uh, maximum and minimum capacity there for ANSI. Has the qualification testing mass for manufacturers been increased? Um, actually, yes. So one of the things that has changed along with 18 other changes that manufacturers uh, saw in terms of both updates and new changes for designing, testing, and manufacturing self-retracting devices has been an increased test mass. The previous test mass was 282 pounds. The new test mass um, is actually 310 pounds, so not a significant change in weight, but that does align us with the top end or the high end of ANSI's weight capacity. And it also gets rid of any you know, potential gray area. I believe in the previous standard, 282 pounds, it was believed that it represented a 310 pound worker, but you know, what, what was the science behind that? So now we actually align that weight with the, the test mass. Any new labeling requirements? So new labeling requirements um, do exist for both class one and class two. So labels have to be affixed to the product displaying the class. So whether it is a class one device or a class two device, but an interesting thing um, that I actually see as a benefit, the fall clearance indicator tables have to actually be at or near the point of attachment to the full body harness. So prior to the standard change, you would have to look at an instruction manual to try to find a clearance table. Now that clearance table is actually on the device, which makes it easier for a worker to see how much clearance they need, depending on how they're using that system. So with this revision, were new SRL classifications created? Um, again, yes. So, so back in the 2014 revision, we had class A devices and we had class B devices. Now we have three main types and two classes for those three types. So we have standard self-retracting lifelines where the housing gets anchored to the structure. We have self-retracting lifelines that are designed for personal use called SRL-Ps. That is where the housing gets attached to the worker's harness. And then we also have SRL-Rs, which are rescue and retrieval devices. Within these three types or these three categories, there is a class one device and a class two device. So class one devices have to be used where the worker is gonna anchor it at their D-ring height or higher. Anywhere D-ring height or higher, we could use a class one. But depending on the worker's applications, if they're chasing anchor points at their knee level, at foot level, sometimes that anchor points overhead, they're probably gonna be better off in that class two device as class two is designed for anchors at D-ring height above or below down to foot level 
and they also include the 2014 leading edge standard. So that class two is really that more robust self-retracting device for somebody in construction, somebody in maintenance who might be tying off at foot level, they might be tying off overhead, and then that class one device is really geared towards the user that always has that anchor point overhead. Can distributors still sell SRDs? As a distributor, this is a this is a good question for, for our friends at Fastenal, right? So yes, after August 1st, 2023, if you still have stock of those existing self-retracting devices that were made to that 2014 standard, you can absolutely still sell them just as the end users can continue to use them. However, us as an equipment manufacturer, so 3M and 3M's competitors, anything after August 1st of this year, 2023, if we want to claim this new ANSI standard, it has to meet the new standard. It can't meet that 2014 standard. Here's a hypothetical for you. Let's say that someone has existing fall protection anchorage. Is it sufficient to use with the, can they use that anchorage with the SRLs newly certified to the updated standard? So here's another one of those, it depends answers, right? So uh, uh, in addition to the test mass, weight increasing from 282 to 310. Now we're stopping self-retracting devices quicker. We had 54 inches in the past, now we have 42 inches. So that does result in some increases in arresting forces from around 900 pounds to 1350 pounds. So if we're thinking of that qualified person and the engineered anchors that they've installed or designed, oftentimes these are based on a two to one safety factor from the maximum arresting force of the equipment. So for the current devices that they're using, they're probably going to be okay. It's still good to double check, but any new new devices under this uh, 2021 revision, we're gonna have to validate that the anchors are appropriate for that two to one safety factor. So for example, if the maximum arresting force used to be 1350, that qualified person could probably get away with a 2,700 pound anchor point. But with this new revision, if that maximum arresting force increases to 1,800, we would need a 3,600 pound structure or anchor point to make that work. So there are some changes with things like uh, confined space equipment, tripods, davit arms, engineered rooftop anchor points, horizontal lifelines. Um, so that end user really needs to be dialed into the equipment that they're using and understand not only the capabilities, but really the limitations of how I shouldn't be using these products.